Welcome to All Things Greater Burlington, where you will hear from the movers, shakers, and change makers that are moving Greater Burlington forward. Here is your host, Stephen Brody. Welcome to All Things Greater Burlington. The Greater Burlington Partnership recently had its annual dinner earlier this year, and the highlights of the evening involved the presentation of the community awards. And one of the uh, prestigious awards given is that of Business Person of the Year. And we are very pleased to have with us the recipient this year, Ryan Negraki with Midwest Realty. And Ryan, welcome. And uh, first of all, congratulations on winning Business Person of the Year. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it. Glad to be here and have a good conversation. So when you saw yourself up on the screen as being the recipient of Business Person of the Year, what what went through your mind? Um, I think the first thing that went through my mind, it was awe and and shock and kind of looked over at my wife and looked back up at the screen and kind of thought, is this real or am I dreaming? (laughs) Um, you know, because uh, to me, I'm just having fun every day, doing what we're doing, and um, so it was awe and shock and hum- humbling at the same time. I have to say, <clears throat> I was over on the side of the room, and your wife Stephanie's expression was priceless uh, because you know she would just had one going along <laughs> with it, and then when she saw that it was you, it was just. You yep. know, just like yep. that startle. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And, and yep. it, that's exactly what we look for. Yeah. Yeah. Is that type of it reaction. It was, uh, I was very shocked and like I said, humbled uh, for, you know, I've been to a lot of those dinners in the past and look up to those people that received those awards and I uh, was very honored for it. So, yes. So, interesting question. Were you planning on coming or were you prodded into coming? No, definitely planning on coming. You know, I've, through my uh, previous career in the banking, I've been to a lot of the chamber dinners, and and, uh, we like to be very involved in the community, and I think that's a great event for the community and the the business professionals there. So um, we had already planned on doing that, and we're a sponsor for the evening auction, and so definitely had planned on going, yeah. No, that's great, and I say that because, you know, sometimes when you'll have, we know ahead of time who's going to be winning, and every now and then you'll hear that the person isn't planning on coming. Yep. So you have to do some kind of interesting <laughs> works behind the scenes yep. to make sure that person shows up. Yep. So, so to be recognized, and, and you may have already answered this, so forgive me. So to be recognized as business person of the year, when, you know, uh, here in the greater Burlington area, what does that mean to you? To me, it puts you up on a pedestal with a lot of other peers in the community that have been here a lot longer than I have, and um, they've done some great things in town, and uh, so I was just very honored to that. And You know, I've only been out on my own doing my own thing now about three years, and so in that short time frame to be recognized for what what our team is trying to do, um, I was very proud of it and, and whatnot. So let's let's get to where you are right now. What what were you doing before? First of all, are you from the area or are you a, a transplant to Greater Burlington? Yep. So I was born and raised here in Burlington. Um, my mom wor- worked at a bank here in town for many many years, and my dad had a uh, small business, a donut shop here in town for many many years. Uh, my grandpa did. It was Harold Spud Nuts, and then my dad had it, Doug's Donuts, and um, so born and raised here in town. And uh, went to went to school here. Um, after college, kind of moved back to the area. Got a job in banking in down in the Keokuk area, actually. And then kind of moved back to Fort Madison in banking, and then up to here. So I had done actual uh, banking for about fifteen years. Okay. Uh, most recent, more in the commercial banking area, and. Through that time frame, my wife and I had invested into real estate, the real estate market through rental properties or flipping a home or two. And it really kind of ignited a passion that I had that I didn't know I had. And it was a lot of fun. Did and, your family uh, do that or where, where'd you pick that up from? <laughs> no, my family was not in real estate at all. Uh-huh. Um, I actually had a coworker that I worked with at the bank. And he came up to me once and asked if I was interested in flipping a house with him. And I kind of looked at him and I said, you know, 
I've never done anything like that, uh-huh. um, but I'm willing to learn, and it sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. And his whole family had a strong uh, construction background, and so we kind of tag teamed and and did that. And I got the bug, and uh, it was just something fun that you know Stephanie and I would do sometimes after work. You get off work to go to work, and uh, <laughs> so we did that for several years. And then um, after our son Aiden was born. We didn't do anything for a few years, just kind of focused on family. And um, and uh, so there was a, a, a point in my life that um, tragically my dad had died in uh, 2013, so 10 years this year. And uh, it kind of changes your perspective on life, and you kind of look at things differently. And so yeah. my wife and I had talked a lot back in 2019 um, you know, about what I had done and the work I had lined up in the pipeline. I received a tax credit for a development we were doing at that time. And I said, I think now's the time, you know, and that was going into 2020. Little did I know <laughs> <laughs> what was in store in 2020, but everybody um, had big plans in 2020. Yeah. You didn't know what was going to happen in March. Exactly. And, uh, we just said, you know, life short. Um, you know, I talked to my boss at the bank about it in depth. And we just, you know, life short. If you enjoy doing something, go do it. If you're passionate about it, you'll you'll succeed. You you make you make it happen. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of what I did. And I think our community needed housing. It needed um, a, more of a focus on the development and construction aspect. And so that's just kind of where we took it. So. Yeah. And I'm glad that you brought that up because when I go to conferences and meetings. That's one of the overriding themes of needs in the state of Iowa is housing. Mm-hmm. There is there is a housing shortage. There is a need for, call it what you will, affordable housing, if, if that's even the, the right mm-hmm. word to use these days. So from your perspective, you know, how how are you able to address that and try to try to solve the housing problem that is going on, not only in the region, but in the state. So we, I kind of looked at it as that, you know, we have a, there's a good group of uh, local contractors and other builders in the area too, that, you know, they were building custom homes for people, or they might build one or two spec homes in the area. But um, our goal is to kind of scale those efforts over time. And and utilize, there's programs that the state puts out that help incentivize workforce housing and uh, those kinds of programs. And so I looked at those and I said, you know, nobody was focused on that here in the, in Southeast Iowa. And so, you know, if the state's going to put that money out there, I want that to come to our community. You know, again, being born and raised here, and I want to see our community thrive and, and grow. What do you mean and, by workforce housing, by the way? So workforce housing, I use that term. It's a uh, the state has a a program that they put out that just incentivizes. It's more market rate housing. Um, it's not a subsidized product or anything, but workforce for your your typical you know average house household income earners. Gotcha. So gotcha. Um, you know, and so we uh, we looked at that, and so we received a, an award to build some uh, townhomes there in West Burlington. So we had. We had done that and completed that in 2021, and then we received another award uh, to build 52 um, units that we're currently doing right north of Target. Mm. And so we want to continue to utilize that program that the state state has out there to bring housing options uh, to the Burlington area. How competitive is it to get those awards? Um, it's very competitive. I want to say the last round that we applied, there was, um, I want to say there was about 100 and some applications. And out of those 100 applications, 40 of those got funded. This is statewide? Statewide, yes. Okay. What type of information do you need to provide them in order to make you, you know, qualified? And There's a pretty in-depth, lengthy process for that. Uh Um, It goes anywhere to, uh, you know, we're just actually updating our housing study here in the Burlington area. So, you know, they look into your housing uh, stock, your housing inventories, the age of your housing. Um, You know, here in Southeast Iowa, we have one of the oldest housing 
um, inventories here in the state. So they look at that. They look at, you know, the jobs that you're, br- you're bringing to the area. Are they growing? Are you flat? Are you declining? Yeah. Um, you know, you got to get a lot of local support from manufacturers, um, the healthcare system, different uh, employers in the area that they step up and you kind of have meetings with them and they l- write letters of support. You meet with the councils of government in, in your area uh, just to go through a different process. But there's a lot of detail that goes into it. You have to have architectural drawings, engineer drawings um, to provide the state and get your, your funding and your financing commitment lined up. And so, so when you when you got off the ground, Ryan, doing stuff like that and all those things that you're talking about, did you ha- did you know how to do those things already or did you – contract those out like doing the specs and 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 all that other stuff in order to get a house put together so i was fortunate um when i worked at the bank i had talked to the bank and kind of asked for permission to work with some of this stuff at that same time frame and so a lot of it um i would do at home in the evenings so i'd stay up till two in the morning (laughs) doing a lot of research and uh to figure out what I needed to do, how to do it, the process to go through. And so I just kind of taught myself a lot of things. Really, And, um, but uh, that comes back to that passion and and things, you know, that I know Stephanie had come into the office at home sometimes and she'd at one 32 in the morning and say, do you realize what time it is? You still have to get up in the morning, you know, I know. (laughs) And, and, uh, you know, so you go to bed, you get up, yeah. Go go to work and you do it again and and um, so in the very beginning you know it was there's a lot of late nights or early mornings yeah. um, kind of just teaching myself how to go about that process. What were there things that you didn't know that you had to learn pretty quickly? Like for example, like how was the bureaucracy in terms of being able to get the idea in your head to being able to then break ground? Yeah, there. There was a lot of different things, but um, I'm a guy that also likes to surround myself with people that are very well knowledgeable and educated about different matters through that whole real estate process. Right. So, you know, I don't say that I did it by myself. I had a good team of people that I kind of would, you know, including everybody here at the partnership. Um, to the different city councils or mayors, city managers. Um, and I used uh, Klinger and Associates, you know. So I just kind of would hold meetings with everybody and say, hey, this is what I'm looking at trying to do. Yeah. And I'm going to need everybody's help to to make that happen. Yeah. So just kind of make it a team effort because I think uh, if if I can do it, then it benefits everybody. Yeah. How how are you coming along with the the project in West Burlington? So, it, yep. tell me again: Are they apartments or townhomes? What? So it, we we called it Nexus Townhomes. Um, okay. It's kind of a townhome slash apartment development. Okay. Um, that that's being built out right now. We've got uh, almost our second building up framed on it right now. We're hoping to have about twenty units ready to rent by August. Oh, wonderful! Um, and then the second phase of that would start this fall okay so we're uh, kind of broken up into two phases and uh so all 52 of them would be done sometime uh next summer wow and when when did that get start when did you break ground uh, we just started last fall okay so i want to say it was uh november november we started uh kind of moving dirt on the the first building so and we're breaking them up into four plexes and eight plexes uh-huh so the four plexes are three bedroom, two bath. They have an attached garage, things like that. Um, so it's more of a townhome feel on those. Uh-huh. The eight plexes are going to be like your one bedroom and two bedroom units that are more of an apartment feel. Yeah. But the development itself's got a nice little community feel because we're putting a dog park in, putting a little playground in for the kids. Yeah. Um, we're trying to do a little bit more family friendly, you know. Uh, area out there so. did you do what type of research did you do in advance to kind of come to the determination of this is the type of housing that that would be a good fit here yep so what i kind of did was looked at um you know we had an old housing study that was out there showed obviously we needed housing yeah and just talking to different community members of what we needed and 
there was already a lot of units being built downtown Burlington here and and uh, but on the outer liers of the community there really wasn't a ton of um, right. apartment type development uh -huh. and while that's good that we have everything going on downtown um, some people may not that may not be the the feel of where they want to live and so I wanted to bring a different option and so that's where we broke it up so it's not into one building it's kind of multiples and the townhome feel that's more of a modern aspect that you would see in a bigger community. Mm -hmm. um, we we meet with a lot of folks that are uh, transient moving into the area, and that's what they like to see because that's what they're if they're coming from a bigger area or a bigger market, they're used to seeing those things. So being able to have that product available to the marketplace for them, I think, will be a, a good advantage for us. Are your products catering to a certain demographic? Are they catering um, to young families or or just uh, new couples maybe retirees that are scaling down you're not doing yep. anything like with like for larger families yet are you so we've got <clears throat> besides the townhome apartment nexus project uh -huh. um that project in itself is more geared towards your young professionals or your younger families uh -huh. um just with the the dog park and the, the playground aspect of it um, we do have several other subdivisions in the area. We have one on Horizon Street. It's off of West Avenue in Burlington. That's more of a single family home development. That's kind of your second home, third home type people, uh, your professional pro business professionals. And then we have another one on Lavender Lane in Burlington. It's off Mason Road. And that one's kind of more of the business professional um, kind of second, third home type development wow. there. Okay. Some of them we've, we've done some for, more seniors looking at uh, that are retiring, you know, wanting to downsize. But also, we've we've had some good folks that have moved into the area that we've built for too, uh -huh. um, that have relocated here. Yeah, the projects you've done, Ryan, has it been mostly on vacant land, or was it what was there structures there previously that had to be torn down in order for you to do your work? Yep, everything we've done to this point has been uh, vacant land that's uh, been developed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have not done anything that um, needed demolished or infill type. It was all new new development stuff. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, and you don't limit yourself to just doing your job. You and Stephanie as well have branched out into the community and you've involved yourself in, in being active mm -hmm. as well. Why why do that? Yeah, so we, um, we're very community-oriented, community-minded. Um, we try to bring that into our employees at, at the office too, just because I think it's important being born and raised here. And um, we, uh, in fact, at, at the chamber dinner this year, we, uh, we brought two of our interns that uh, were seniors in high school. And so we wanted to bring them and get them involved just to see um, Burlington from a different angle or a different perspective. Yeah. So I think uh, we want to get the, the younger kids involved sooner and hope in hopes that if they go to college, they leave the area, or maybe they go to SEC and they stay here because they get exposed to what what Burlington's about and and as a community. And you know, I know uh, one of them said, "Man, I didn't realize all the things that actually are happening in Burlington." You know, and so I think uh, we're just trying to get get all those folks involved in the community. And um, you know, my wall, my wife is very involved in. Uh, the Kiwanis organization in town. She's involved a new board member on uh, the Build a Bed Burlington, and uh, they see a lot of people see that, and it's just uh, what is that, Ryan? Build a Bed Burlington. Build a Bed's a new organization that uh, my wife was part of. They just started up here probably about six, eight months ago. Oh. Might, might be a year now, actually. Yeah. And uh, so what they do is, uh, in fact, they just received a little over four thousand dollars from the Snowball. Uh, this year. And what they do is they build beds for kids in the community that, that aren't fortunate enough to have a bed. And uh, then they provide all the bedding, so sheets, pillows, all things like that. And so, you know, no bed, no, no kid should go without a bed. Right. And uh, so just little things like that, that, that she's uh, helped out with. And where do the beds go? In, in the house where they live? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I think I shouldn't quote, I, I want to say that last year they delivered over 60 beds. Um, the sponsoring organization is actually First Christian Church, uh -huh. um, and uh, so they've they've had a lot of congregation members out there through the church help out as well. 
Talk about the other um, venture you're involved with, Ryan, having to do with the um, the, the prisons. Oh, yep. So, um, so my wife Stephanie, we uh, I've had a, a great working relationship actually with Mike Norris, who uh, works out at Southeast Iowa Regional Planning. Yes. And Mike Norris and Dan Clark were kind of the uh, spearhead for an organization. Um, that back in 2013, 2014, Homes for Iowa. So Homes for Iowa was um, an organization that started, actually it's based out of Newton, Newton, Iowa, at the correctional facility. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is uh, they are building modular-based homes in Newton and the, the giving the correctional inmates kind of a purpose, you know, and, and teaching them a very valued skill. Yeah. So upon their release, they've got a, a good skill and a trade that they could become employed within their community. And so Mike Norris had approached me. Um, you know, that program, that first year, they moved, I think, eight homes. And he was doing a lot of the logistics. And oh. he came to me, Mike did, and said, we need help. We need help. And at the time, I was busy with uh, selling real estate and doing the development, and I just I I didn't have time. And he, Mike, had came back and said, "We really need help." And <laughs> and so um, I said, "Well, let me talk with Stephanie, and I think it'd be something she'd be interested uh, in, maybe helping." She has a military background; it was some with logistics a little bit, and so we met uh, with Mike and the Homes for Iowa uh, director uh, Dan Clark. And um, so what we do, uh, Midwest is part of Homes for Iowa, and we help do all the logistics. So the homes are built in Newton. And then what uh, we do is we help transport those homes throughout the state of Iowa. So she works with the different uh, end users through the different COGS, councils of government. Um, and then logistic move those through each community, the counties, works with utility providers, all those kinds of different things oh to get gosh. that home to the end user, works with the home buyers. So we take the uh, application if somebody's interested in buying one. Um, but uh, it's really a great program. They're looking at um, this year trying to do a little over 50 homes and wow. keep scaling it. Their goal is to get to over 100. Yeah. So, yep. Neat program. So though. you've got so you've got a hand in somewhere where you're driving on the highway and there's, there's a modular home being – hauled on on a big truck. yeah they go down the road 24 foot wide yep oh my god so it's uh it's it's a different animal um there's a lot that she does for it and uh does she have to arrange for like for those pilot vehicles as well that yeah they're like, fully D dot escorted uh -huh. uh, state patrol and, and everything yep How'd yep. she learn? How'd she learn to do that? I mean, we should have Stephanie in there. <laughs> we're talking about her yeah. as much as you. My um, goodness. She uh <laughs> she. Learn from Mike. Mike kind of just gave her the key contact people, and then kind of like me, you just jump in and 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 you learn and you do it, yeah. and uh, surround yourself with the people that can help you. And uh, we got it got it figured out now. and Got a good system down to, yeah. to do it. So so now you've been doing homes now for a few years, and you're and you're being successful with it, and we we appreciate that. I'm sure the community does. Now that you've got your, you know, your toes fully in it, what do you, what do you think needs to be done next? What do you think needs to be done to kind of address the continuing concern about housing? And now that you've been involved, is there something that you can kind of identify and say, okay, I really think this needs to be done. This is an area that we need to address in order to satisfy this need and this concern. Yep. So I know like in, in our area, um, <clears throat> I'd mentioned earlier, so we actually have one of the oldest housing stocks in the state of Iowa here in Southeast Iowa. I think you mentioned that before. And yeah. so regional planning out here, Mike Norris again, um, has done a great job and we received a pilot grant, uh, a little over a million dollars to the Saunderson Heights neighborhood. Oh. And what that's going to be utilized for is to go into those neighborhoods and uh, provide exterior renovations. So I think more of those kinds of things, if we can figure out how to fund those programs to go and uh, to help different neighborhoods and, and bring that up, uh -huh. um, I think that that catches. So other people, you know, see the neighbor's house getting done and then they want to invest in their home and, and it just beautifies the neighborhoods. And um, 
So different things like that, coming up with ways to fund those programs. The other thing that uh, I'm kind of curious and reading into a little bit is, is senior housing. So there is a great need, I think, in our area for um, a good new product for seniors and um, of an income uh, uh, situated person that um, to help out. and uh, Of an independent living Yes, yep. independent living, yep. Mm-hmm. Um, because as we all have seen here in the past couple of years with inflation and things that, uh, you know, those people that are on fixed incomes and need good quality, affordable housing. Yeah. And uh, so a product that would kind of help them, I, I see a need for that. Yeah. And do you find that you're getting a lot of, uh, there's a lot of like-minded individuals like you uh, that are wanting to address this issue? You're not you're not feeling like an island, are you? No, no. I think there's multiple people that definitely agree with that and, and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you are you content with being doing what you're doing, or do you have thoughts of broadening or ex- expanding? Yeah. So we've got um, a new addition started um, later last year. There, we, uh, my business partner John Mercer, we started a real estate brokerage. Okay. So we have a real estate brokerage as well, and we've got several real estate agents that work for us. And uh, so growing that real estate brokerage piece um, here and being vertically integrated to where we have the land development, we have new construction abilities, uh, we can also help you buy or sell any home in the market, and then with our rental portfolio, being able to help people if they're looking at renting. Um, so kind of looking at growing on that aspect. And then, um, you know, uh, I want to help out kind of Southeast Iowa first. You know, we're looking at some other projects in a couple surrounding counties. Yeah. And um, that uh, that also are in the same situation here as Burlington or Des Moines County and um, kind of taking that. And we uh, got some other development opportunities we're looking at here in the West Burlington, Burlington area. It'll be coming up in the next year, hopefully. Kind of see what interest rates do and okay. where the market takes it. But, yeah. you know, I mean – Housing's a, a big deal. In, in 2019, uh, at any given average time, there's about 250 homes on the market. And uh, if you look at that today, there's like 58. Out of those 58, there's about 42 that do not have an accepted offer on them. Mm-hmm. So there's just a huge lack of inventory. And there's just, it's a, it's a, it's a big issue I see. Sure. You know? How do you fix the housing here in, in rural Iowa, right? Yeah. How are you doing staffing-wise for purposes of your business? Doing well. We've got um, we've got uh, several team members that we've added to our staff here in the past year. We've got Taylor in our office that, that kind of does all our administrative and bookkeeping work. We've got uh, Kelly in the office. She's our designer. So she works with our customers on building new home, helping them design it and make it look like it does on TV or in the magazine, you know, and she does a great job with that. And my business partner, John, uh, taking care of the real estate brokerage side. And then we've got uh, four full-time construction crew guys that are out in the field uh, that are building the product that we're putting out. And uh, we're actually going to be doing some interviews here uh, next week, trying to add to that. Um, we're hoping to grow on the construction side and and uh, we got some other people talking to on the the real estate agent side as well. So yeah. we, uh, it's been tough, you know, in that construction sector trying to get some people. So we've got, we're talking with the college and, and looking at trying to build a home with their trades program this fall. And uh, a lot of my subcontractors are on board to help out with that and to be able to, you know, get that trades program going again, really good and strong uh, to pump out some additional labor force on the construction side. So, yeah. Um, cause you know, if I could hire about 10 guys right now, I probably would. So, and I, I know all the other construction guys would say the same. So I would be remiss in the remaining moments not to ask you about the amazing, uh, renovation that you did to where you're now located in West Burlington. Can mm-hmm. you talk about that real quick as to what, yeah. what you did there? Yeah. So we bought the, uh, <clears throat> what used to be the old pawn shop in West Burlington, uh, 914 West Burlington or 914 Broadway there in West Burlington. And, uh, you know, we looked at that building uh, several different times and we kept coming back to it. And uh, because the front building was 7,500 square feet, which we knew was way bigger than what we needed. But, um, you know, I knew we could tear it apart, put it back together exactly the way we wanted and how we wanted it. And uh, 
you know, it took us about eight months and uh, it's worked out great. We have a, a nice building in the back that we use for warehousing and, uh, but it gives people private offices. So when they meet with their clients, we've got, you know, that private space and um, nice little showroom and boardroom. And it, it uh, turned out real nice and we're proud of it. Well, we had a ribbon cutting there and you had a lot of interest. A lot of folks came to congratulate you and welcome you. And it's a, it's just a fabulous location. So in closing, if folks want to get a hold of you, uh, how do they reach Midwest Realty Group? Yeah, so you can find us um, online at MidwestRealtyGroupInc.com. We're on Facebook, Midwest Realty Group. Um, we're at 914 Broadway there in West Burlington, right next door to Ritter's, across from uh, Walmart, or 319-237-1139. Wonderful. Well, Ryan, thank you again for your contribution to the community, what you're doing to help address the housing needs here. And most importantly, congratulations on being recognized as Business Person of the Year. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening. We invite you to like and subscribe to our podcast. And please contact us at the Greater Burlington Partnership if you have suggestions on who you would like us to interview next. Until then, thanks so much. We'll see you next time on All Things Greater Burlington. You have been listening to All Things Greater Burlington with Stephen Brody. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to catch all new episodes. To learn more about all things Greater Burlington, visit greaterburlington.com slash ATGB.